Hello. Uh, good morning to Jim Talk. Uh, I actually, too, had to learn an instrument. And my mom tried to force me to play a flute. And I said, no way am I going to touch that thing. And so then we, so we had a bit of a fight. And that, uh, so we had a bit of a fight. And we compromised because I wanted to be a rock star. So then I took guitar lessons. But then my teacher was actually a folk guitarist, and I wanted to be a rock star, so that didn't work out. And then, I, then she forced me to take piano lessons, so I sacrificed my Saturday morning, basically having to go to take piano lessons, which eventually I failed. By the time I actually started to do drumming, Afro-Caribbean drumming, at that point I just wanted to go dancing at the techno clubs. Um, anyway, so Blender Finance, so thank you, Jim, for talking about the concept of this, of this strategy. So my goal is to present the, the project. So I'm Charles Paulette. I cover the Ghana and the financial institutions portfolio uh, for the USAID funded project, the West Africa Trade and Investment Hub. The project covers 18 countries and we have covered about no, over 90 partnerships between 2021 and May of 2022. And that 91 partnerships actually involve over $75 million in, in grant agreements covering various sectors and uh, value chains, over 30 value chains, but predominantly it's agriculture. We have 19 indicators that we have to track, but eventually there are four cardinal elements that we cover, and that is we need to mobilize over $400 million in partnerships. We need to and those funding will need to be invested in SMEs so that they can generate over $300 million in exports and over $375 million in sales, and as well as generate jobs. So how did we do this? So basically, we have three pathways to get to our target. We can work directly with the SME, we can work directly with their investor, or we can work directly with their advisor who will work with the investor to release the funds to the SME. To the right, you will see a sample of our partners. And let me just talk about one or two of these, or three. You'll see Pacha Soap. Now, that's a US firm. But instead of working directly with the US firm, we actually work with their suppliers in Liberia and Ghana as part of our localization strategy. You'll see Wark. Wark is a farm services, a startup. So they started in Sierra Leone. They wanted to expand in Ghana. And we basically took their concept and helped them to expand. And now they're expanding across the country, uh, going over $7 million in, in, over $6 million in sales. And lastly, you'll see African Guarantee Fund. They are a guarantee fund. So this was under COVID. So we needed to unlock a lot of capital for the SMEs suffering from lack of access to lack of access to credit uh, during the crisis. So with that, our $2 million first loss unlocked 20 million from a key investor. That $20 million was then used to uh, convince over 20 banks in 15 countries to lend over $200 million in over 3,000 SMEs. So as noted, we are geared towards empowering local firms. Most of our partners, nearly 90%, I would even say over 90, uh, 95, nearly all of them, actually have a very, very local component. That's either through the supply chain, through local players, or local investments. Now, of course, many of these companies, because we're keen to promote trade links between the US and, and West African firms, some of these startups are actually registering in the US because that's where the investors are. Uh, for instance, we have here FreezeLink, that is a cold chain startup, and we guided them and we advised and we worked with them about starting up their registration in Delaware because Delaware is the capital for venture capitalism. So as you can imagine, we have over 90 partners, we work with eight missions across 18 countries, and that sense of scope, which Jim referred to as scalability or replicability, it provides us a, with a lot of lessons learned. Uh, we're talking about what are the sil silver linings between different crops. We're talking about new crops. So we're launching 
Dafonio, a pearl millet uh, native to West Africa as a new global value chain. Uh, Jim talked about value addition in the cashew. Again, that is a key West African crop. Uh, we've learned about how do we access data because that data is the marketing tool that we need to show to the market um, the, the success or the strengths of these, of these partnerships.